yourself. You're not good to anyone else. And we want you to be as amazing as you can be. So like always, this is being recorded. Um, I say that because I want you to know that anything you say is recorded for our website. So people who didn't get to join tonight can join later. If there's ever anything you want to communicate to me, please feel free to email separately. Um, you can email Irv if there's, you know, whoever you need to, it's okay. But I just want to make sure everyone did know tonight is being recorded. Um, now, we have someone with us who you may or may not have seen before. Two people, actually. I know everyone knows Irv. We'll get to Irv in a minute. Because um, everybody knows Irv, and, and we all know what Irv does for us. He gives us the most amazing workshops that we have for any New Hampshire members, sometimes non-members. We entice them in. Um, but we also have Cindy Dickinson with us tonight. And Cindy is a good friend with NEA New Hampshire. She has done a lot of presenting for us at workshops. Um, she knows NEA New Hampshire. She knows the members. She is a former teacher. She's a current school counselor. So she knows what she's talking about. She supports educators in any way that she can. And what she always talks about is how important it is to make sure you're taking care of yourself. Um, so I'm gonna stop there. I'm going to let Cindy give us a little bit um, of her perspective, what she sees going on, why it's so important. Um, and then like always, we'll get into the chat box. We'll just kind of see where everything goes and go from there. So thank you, Cindy, for joining us tonight. Um, and again, we also have our Richardson, who I think needs no introduction, but I will introduce him as well. Um, coordinator of Public Education and School Support. And again, knows, I mean, the contacts that he has are amazing. The fact that, you know, if you say I want a workshop or something on this, he knows somebody and he finds somebody for us. So we have Irv and Cindy with us tonight. We're so happy that they could be here. You can definitely drink your wine on camera, Julie. Um, go for, I have root beer, but go for your wine. I will get some after the call and cheers to you after. So um, there you go, Cindy. <laughs> Thank you very much. Boy, it's a privilege to be here. Thanks so much for asking me. Um, and um, I do, in addition for uh, to doing things on my own to work with teachers, also work for Cigna's EAP. So right out of the gate, I'm not here in that capacity tonight, but uh, right out of the gate, just to remind you that you guys do have all kinds of really good support for self-care and everything else through that EAP. Um, about 12 or 13 years ago uh, when I was teaching I taught high school English and theater and I realized one day that I was starting to care more about teachers than students and I that was my marker it was time to leave the profession uh, but I I've been looking ever since then to try to find ways that I can support teachers because I know what you do and uh, and while there seemed to be a lot of appreciation on a lot of levels for teachers I didn't think there was a lot of care going on and um, you know, teachers care for everybody, as Megan said, you just, you care for others all the time. And there's a pretty dramatic challenge involved in taking care of yourself. And we find ourselves now in the middle of this bizarre situation uh, where you had a period of days to take everything you do and turn it upside down and do it someplace else with, uh, with, probably very little of what you need to do the job. And it was just incredible what I saw people doing. So I, I started to put together some self-care um, tips and, and techniques and strategies for COVID-19. And I realized it's very different now taking care of yourself, trying to take care of yourself, because in some ways, all bets are off. You know, this is not the best time to, for example, go on a diet and lose 20 pounds. It's not the best time to change all your habits or improve your relationships or, you know, start a fitness plan or whatever the standard advice might be. So I, I thought, well, what do we, how can we kind of get our bearings in this particularly challenging time and still keep ourselves well or keep you folks well as teachers and educators uh, without uh, uh, expecting us to do the same things we try to do during normal times. And I, I kind of came up with three guidelines. The first is just breathe. That concept and the act of stopping, taking a moment amongst the frenzies, because if you hadn't noticed, doesn't look like things are going to get a lot better over the summer as we start to worry about how to go back. That anxiety that we just kind of gotten used to, how do I 
do this from home and all of those challenges. And then suddenly we're going to be looking at how do I take it back into the school? So our anxiety is not going to get any better. So stop. Number one, just stop, take a breath, kind of get your bearings. And I'll talk a little bit more in a few minutes about the act of deep breathing because it is a uh, maybe your best strategy of all for helping you feel better. But uh, stopping to breathe is the first. The second is finding your good enough because now is not the time to try to be perfect. You know, uh, if you're on social media, you probably see these pictures of how people exercise and, you know, they're, they're out for their, their, 50th mile of the week, or they're doing interpretive dance, or they have all these muscles or whatever. In reality, most of us are lying around on the floor with our devices. So uh, uh, what's good enough for you? You know, uh, what's, if you're a perfectionist as far as your home goes, how about teaching from home and guiding your own children in their education? How perfect is your house right now? Uh, probably not. Um, so finding that good enough, whether it is, I'm a good enough parent. You know, remember Bruno Bettelheim from the 80s or whenever he, he wrote that book? Anybody remember a date for Bettelheim's good enough parent? Such a comforting title to me when I was raising my kids, but a good enough parent, a good enough teacher. And we don't have the luxury very often of just being good enough. But right now, and when we get back into whatever craziness we have in the fall, uh, that might be our standard in terms of caring for ourselves. Um, and then finally, give yourself credit for what you are doing. Because I'm pretty sure in a day in your life, whether it's, uh, you know, teaching or parenting or you, you know whatever you have going on you don't hear a lot of people say to you oh you're doing a great job look at that you got the dishes done by four o'clock in the afternoon or you managed to get your kids through their work for the week by Thursday afternoon at five or whatever that is so we need to give ourselves credit and if we can look at all of the things that we need to do, and here comes my Charlie Brown teacher thing, right? You need, we need to eat right, we need to move our bodies, and we need to get enough sleep. So usually when I start talking about that, it's like blah, 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 blah. However, it's the stuff we've got to do, right? So we don't feel worse, and yet we might not be able to set the same kind of goals, have that same kind of uh, sort of high ideal that we had during non-COVID times. Uh, our anxiety levels for many of us are through the roof, and in terms of our emotional functioning, I'm finding that a lot of just that we've gone through, uh, so much going on, and then we're anxious. So those are kind of three parts of our new normal. But let's um, let's really quickly. I'm working from some slides here for my presentation, but let's quickly go through um, some just some basic guidelines for moving our bodies. Let's start with that. So uh, first of all, for us to remember that anything you do is better than nothing. Now the one caveat to that is if you walk down the hall from your office to the refrigerator and you don't burn what you're going to eat when you walk down the hall, that might not be a gain. However, if you get up and walk once around your house, then you're doing more than you did before. So keep that as your bottom line, right? Anything you do to move is better than not moving. Great new research out. Um, in one of my other lives, I'm also a personal trainer and an exercise instructor, and they're releasing new information all the time about how small bouts of intense activity, like you know, every two hours, stand up and throw in a couple, a couple of jumping jacks or 20 or 30 jumping jacks, but that alone is enough to get your body uh, started in some positive processes. So um, uh, take advantage of any kind of movement that you can get. If you play with your kids or your grandkids, if you mow your lawn, even a riding mower, by the way, if you have a bumpy lawn, you can get five or 6,000 steps on your Fitbit if you have a bumpy lawn. Now, I'm not saying that counts, but you know, it's a, something to keep in mind. Um, a step is a step, Cindy. <laughs> that's right, exactly. They exactly. all count. 
exactly. So like heavy housework, um, moving things, working in the yard, uh, uh, walking your dog, people who have dogs, by the way, I saw the Frenchie, they're very cool dogs. Um, people who have dogs walk them are healthier than people who don't have dogs. That's just, just what the numbers show. But uh, uh, the key here to getting enough movement, because you know we should have uh, cardiovascular exercise. You have about 30 minutes on most days. That's not during a crisis, all right? So, but that's what you kind of keep in mind. Wouldn't it be nice when things go back to normal if I could walk 30 minutes a day? But for now, whatever you do is good. We all need a little bit of resistance, you know that, right? You gotta move something with your muscles so that it strengthens your bones. In a perfect world, that's a couple of times a week. And then flexibility and balance. So when we get old, we don't fall down and we feel better. Um, so you um, have options, like people's gyms are closed basically and, and uh, are opening now maybe in small, small situations, but there are lots and lots of free workouts on YouTube. Nobody really needs to pay anything to exercise. Uh, if you find a short program that you'd like to do on YouTube or online, um, maybe you get an exercise ball because those are easy to come by, not very expensive. Um, you can uh, use maybe those tubing, those pieces of tubing with handles on them for um, resistance work and do what you can. That is my plea in terms of exercising. We do have to move our bodies. In terms of what we eat, uh, and here's a, this is a tough one. Um, you know what you see on social media, uh, people's lunches and they're all these vegetables and like lots of roasted Brussels sprouts and delicious looking healthy food. And you know what people are eating, right? <laughs> um, are you comfort eating? And, and that's kind of a big thing for many of us. Um, I know that's one of my big downfalls. Uh, so take a look at what you're doing in terms of what you're putting into your body. I, in my opinion, and, and it's only based on really my own likes and habits and struggles, but when you're under a, a high amount of stress, it's not a great time to go on a diet. So this may not be the time to try to change all your eating habits, but here's a question that you can ask. Will this make me feel better or worse? So if the answer to comfort eating brownies by the row, um, by the pan, a row at a time, if that ultimately in a day or two is gonna make you feel worse, just ask yourself, kind of, kind of get your bearings with that, right? Um, because there's nothing wrong with a little bit of food as comfort, but uh, if it starts to make you feel worse, we know, right? You know, all know the my, you know the my plate thing, right? Uh, the the little diagram of the plate with the whole grains and the fruits and vegetables and protein. So maybe uh, you know some kind of tips for trying to keep your eating halfway normal. Uh, at least you don't have to go by the teacher's room with all the chocolate in it, right? Does everybody have those at their schools? <laughs> Do you think we'd all lose 20 pounds immediately just from not having to walk by that? But I'm finding that's not what people are, are is, is happening to people. But um, make sure you get the elements of nutrition first. Just get those, get some fruit, get a, get a vegetable or two, get your protein, you know, your whole grains, the, the, the dairy, whatever you're following for your plan and then make room for the comfort food, make room for the things that, um, that might bring you a little bit more joy. Try to find a good enough balance and shopping can be really helpful here. If you're uh, trying to shop minimally, maybe every three weeks or so, uh, if you're doing the, the uh, market basket, old people hours like I am, that's a blast by the way. It's really easy to get around the store. Um, but anyway, if you don't buy it and if you don't have it in the house and, and you don't really want to mask up and you know go out and make another run for it, oh, Amazon, yep, <laughs> I'm seeing that. Yeah, that's a good point, Karen. Uh, but anyway, if you shop smart, uh, you can have a little bit more control over the kind of temptations that you bring in. So, you, you know, you've heard this all before, this blah, 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 but apply the good enough guideline to it. Um, apply that concept of, is this going to make me feel a lot worse? Am I going to emerge at the other end of this 
with a whole lot of things that I have to do because of my behavior. Um, but my, my final word about um, what we eat and how we eat it is keep weight issues in perspective during all this. Consider the amount of stress that you have been under. Be kind to yourself. There are worse things than gaining a few pounds uh, given what everybody's had to go through. So it, it's something you, you know, if you want to tackle it, wait until you've had a chance to breathe, uh, had a chance to be kind to yourself. Try not to make it worse if you can to make yourself feel worse. But now is time to give yourself a little bit of grace instead of beating yourself up. Um, so that's, you know, that's the kind of uh, flyover of eating and exercise. And the one thing that, that um, you know, we talk about sleep a lot and how important that is. I think the one maybe bright or silver lining of all of this is certainly kids are getting more sleep. You know, I do teletherapy sessions with kids and they are awake for the first time since I've known them because they don't have to get up so early. They have an opportunity to sleep a little bit in the morning. And I'm, I'm not sure what kind of schedule you are all on, but it may be that people actually can get a little more sleep. So I don't know where you stand on that, but we need uh, seven to nine hours um, I'm seeing a really cool comment here. I think educators should have a guilt trip, frequent flyer cards, nine days of guilt. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. We're very good at being guilty. Have you noticed that? And, and I think it comes from so many years of people expecting more uh, of us that we can, than we can possibly give faster and better than maybe humanly possible. So it's easy to get into that guilt. Guilt is not productive. So when you can get a little more sleep, maybe take advantage of that. Seven to nine hours for the average adult. Uh, kids need a little bit more, of course. Um, keeping the schedule, I'm seeing from Gail, thank you. Uh, keeping that regular schedule, if you can, um, so that your weekends aren't wildly different from your weeks. It's lovely if you can get up without an alarm. I don't know if people are able to do that or not. Probably not. But um, watch out for um, things like uh, what kind of or how much or what kind of food you eat right before bedtime in terms of how that lets you sleep. You know, does it interfere with the quality of sleep? Alcohol and tobacco, you need to watch out if those are things that you might be um, partaking of before going to bed. Just uh, know what works for you. Know how much screen time works for you and what kind of screens you can look at before you go to bed. And then finally, um, j just quiet that monkey mind, right? That, that concept of monkey mind that's taught in mindfulness and Eastern meditation, you know, where you've got things chattering at you, monkeys that are, uh, you know, chattering about what's up ahead, what's in the future, or uh, going over every bad decision you've ever made or every mistake or everything you should have, would have, could have done. So um, if, if you can find your balance, but sometimes you have to be intentional about it. You have to just say, okay, I need to go to bed at X amount of time. Now, I know if you have a new baby or young children, all bets are off. In fact, they're, they're off for everything probably, certainly for sleep. But when you can, do what you can to get that sleep. Um, now, I'm, I'm kind of rolling on here, but I want to give you just a couple of more tips before I'm quiet. Um, and, and Megan, shut me down anytime, because this is very informal if you couldn't tell. Um, I, I want to address the, the disoriented, exhausted, and anxious elements of what we're going through and some things that can help you kind of manage those and feel fewer effects of them. So hold on a second. So some of the things that, that have us disoriented, I think, are the constant change, those routines that have been upended, certainly everything, and even that need to rethink everything. You know, you, you touch a door handle out in public, or you go into a grocery store and, oh my gosh, do I have what I need? Where's the mask? What do I do with my kids when they go out and then come back in again? Those things that are routine all of a sudden have to be done differently. All of the learning curves, the tech overload for some of us particularly. Um, uh, so 
I'm seeing that question on screen. It's excellent. I will get right to that. So uh, anything that leads to that kind of exhaustion because of all of what we've had to do and learn can address that. The things that make us anxious, and thanks for that question, that loss of control, because we've certainly lost control of a lot of things in our lives, the unknown, and we're clearly <laughs> at no answer yet anyway, or the bar, the uh, goalposts keep moving in terms of getting answers. Um, we are feeling like our lives are threatened by this virus and the lives of the people who are important to us. And then add to that the worry about going back to school and all of these little ones or teenagers that you love and care for. And suddenly we're carrying a real weight of concern and of fear. And then finally, the isolation or the overly together. And for some people, you're, you're in your home with little ones and a spouse and you know maybe older kids who have come home because they have no place to be right now. In that case, you might really need to find time to be alone, to go to your own corners. Or if you are isolated, um, maybe just getting out there and reaching out. But as far as the anxiety goes, and then I'll stop, there are some, some really good tips that you can, if anxious is your new normal. One of the most powerful things that we can do is that, uh, that concept of uh, going from fight or flight to rest and digest. And that involves staying in the moment and using breathing. So anything, and I'm seeing here, um, even stuff like picking, picking up acorns or sticks, um, some that's talking about physical movement. But there are many things that we can do with our bodies and our brains. That's why a walking meditation is a good thing. Uh, that breath work, uh, breathing and being mindful, all anchor us right in the moment. Um, I had a call from a friend the other day. She's a high school teacher right now, um, and she was completely overwhelmed. She was sitting out in her backyard. Uh, she had too many essays to grade, more work than she could do, and she was really going, she was sinking. And so I talked her through where she was. You know, I, I said, where are you sitting right now? And she told me she was on her back deck. Um, I asked her to tell me what she could see. So she went through what was in her backyard. I said, and eventually I got her to a place where I could say, what hasn't changed in your life? right now. And she was able to name a lot of things that had not changed. So if we anchor ourselves in the moment by basically breathing in and breathing out, and that deep breath, by the way, you know, those big belly breaths from mindfulness, that shifts your brain out of fight or flight and into rest and digest. So stimulates the vagus nerve, brings us to a point where we can relax and get out of fight or flight for a little while. Anchoring yourself to those things that you all, that have not changed, finding a source of information that you trust. I, I told Megan I'm really eager to see the NEA's guidelines for returning to school because I get very anxious when I look at the other guidelines that are coming out. They don't they don't feel to me like they are reliable. Um, so finding information that you trust, including a media outlet, including uh, medical advice, whatever you need, make sure that you aren't going to have to question the truth of it or, or question the dependability of it. Um, talk back to those what ifs, those worrying about the future. What if we go back to school and the custodians can't wipe down the railings often enough. Well, save that worry, save that what if until it's time. That's another aspect of being in the moment. Don't go out there, you have to take care of yourself, but if you can just come back and think, you know, talk back to it, just say, you know, not now. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. When we're, when we're in the past, uh, going on about what we should have done, what we should have said, what we could have done, how, why didn't I do this, why did I do this, none of that is productive. So take a big breath, stimulate that vagus nerve, come back to thinking mode, and anchor yourself to the present. Uh, just a couple more. Um, when, you, um, when you're doing things to keep yourself and this might be all we have in the fall is taking the recommended steps and being assured that 
we're doing as much as we can to stay safe, to keep ourselves safe, to keep our children safe. And so reminding yourself of what you're already doing can cut down on anxiety too. Know the difference between the things you can control and the things you can't control. And just, it's easier said than done, but just let go of those things that you can't control. And then finally, if you feel uh, like you're really, um, you're, you're just not able to get a handle on things, you know, if you feel like you're out of balance or if somebody you know is experiencing it, if you feel like you're, uh, you're depressed and you can't kick it, it's been going on for a while, if that anxiety is, uh, you know, just more than what seems typical for you, uh, if anything is off, don't be afraid to reach out for help. That's kind of a nutshell, but maybe if we want to open it up to other people's ideas. Yeah, I was just going to say one thing. Um, I just want to comment on something. So you had talked about coming back in the fall and what would happen if, you know, you touched a doorknob, wasn't sanitized, etc. I just want everyone to know, um, I mean, that obviously is a huge worry because as soon as you close out your school year, and I think this year is worse for people because they didn't get that sense of closure. They didn't get the normal end of the year activities that they get where either the kids help you shut down the classroom or you get to do the normal eighth grade things or, you know, moving on to the next grade. It's definitely not a normal year. And I think having not having that sense of closure has been hard for a lot of people. But I want you to know, and I just want to try to assure you as much as I can, you know, as soon as you close down your school year, you're usually looking forward to the next year. I know I always waited for my... Um, plan book to come in so I could start writing stuff down. I just, I was kind of crazy like that. We're working on that at the state level. And I want you to know that your voices are being heard. We're taking everything that you told us two weeks ago and we're getting it out there. Um, at the national level, we're working on it too to get the guidelines and to get that all set. So for what it's worth, I'm gonna get her in a second. For what it's worth, um, know that we are working on that. As always, send me whatever you want me to see because we'll get the message out. Um, but I did just want to kind of put that out there. I'm, I'm going to turn this over to, to Irv in a second to let him know what we have offering um, while I go get Brindley and you guys can get a guest appearance by the barking wonder of 20 pounds of nothing. <laughs> Thanks, Megan. Where did the dog learn that? <laughs> It's weird that she's my dog and she can't shut up. I don't know. It's the weirdest thing. It's like she was like, I don't know. I got her from Missouri and she's still just like me. Weird. <laughs> um, thanks, Megan. Cindy, you um, sort of wanted to throw it out there to see if people had other ideas or maybe other questions that they wanted to address to you. And then I did want to talk about a couple upcoming opportunities that, in which people might be interested. Yeah, I mean, if anybody, I saw some great ideas that were coming up in, in chat as we went along, people sharing some of the things they were doing, and you're always the best source of ideas and inspiration for each other. So I, I think it would be great if anybody has things that they're doing either with their, with their physical activity or their nutrition or maybe keeping that anxiety at bay or, uh, you know, fighting, fighting the technical overload. I saw some, something about screen time and, um, and migraines. So what do you got? I mean, what do you guys have to share with each other? Cindy, one movie that we showed was a movie called Angst that was about anxiety. And they had a psychologist on there that was talking about when you get anxious, it's really your reptilian brain, the amygdala, because we're wired to say, oh, a saber-toothed tiger or something is coming, but we can create that in our own minds. So her suggestion was to push it from that reptilian brain, the amygdala, up to the frontal cortex, do something that requires thinking. What's the oldest piece of clothing in my dresser drawer? What's the oldest thing in the refrigerator? Even holding ice cubes to say, oh my gosh, those are cold. So get out of that cycle of, I'm not consciously thinking, I'm just anxious to know how do I do something cognitive to push it away from the back yes. of my brain. Yeah, yeah, because you know that, that Dr. Dan Siegel hand model of the brain, right? Where here's your primitive brain, uh, here's your brain stem, and here's the amygdala and the hippocampus. Here's our, 
cortex, our prefrontal cortex, where we're calm and centered. And when we get anxious, we flip our lids and we're living in that emotional fight or flight place. So the, ex the things that Irv just noted bring that cortex and prefrontal cortex back online. Uh, and that is the, that's where we can stay in that moment as well. So that's a really good uh, set of things that you can do. Also, when you take those deep belly breaths, um, you, you bring that, you again, you get your lid back on because your lid is flipped when you're in that fight or flight situation. And somebody in the chat box put a free link to NM, put a free link to Headspace, which is an app that you can use. There's a pay version, but there are also is a free version to that for taking care of yourself and meditation. And if you're a subscriber to Audible, the online books, there are also free things about sleep and meditation. You don't have to pay for them. It's in the library. And if you're a subscriber, you get them free. And Gail was mentioning Calm is another great app and yeah. it's also yeah. free. Um, I use a guy, uh, uh, there's a guy named Michael Seeley who has a lot of things on YouTube uh, and I do breath work and some mindfulness meditations with him. He's just a guy who puts stuff up there and he is excellent. Anything by John Kabat-Zinn is a great uh, mindfulness meditation guide and that it all works to the same effect and you really will feel better. You'll, you'll yeah. feel uh, dramatically better and gail's very calm it takes her an hour and a half to watch 60 minutes yeah <laughs> or can i just jump in for a second sure so i found one of the silliest things to do but for me having the three boys um it's just i try i get my sleep at night um but i try to wake up half an hour earlier than everyone else and i literally just i got a big mug so i buy i get a big cup of coffee um, and I just go on my deck with my dog and we watch the birds in the morning mm, and wonderful. they all just scared away because he, you know, she barks at all of them, yep. but I bought a bird feeder. It's on the deck. So I usually, um, at night and in the morning, I'll take a cup of coffee out in the morning and at night, we're usually out there for at least 10 minutes just to kind of, you know, calm down and see yep. silliest little thing. But honestly, you know, yard work, yard work, like Chrissy said, you know, get outside, do something. I yep. posted. You know, I brought my kids up to the flume yesterday, and of course they had little geography lessons about striation marks and glacier boulders and all that fun stuff. And they were like, oh my God, mom, seriously? Like you're still teaching us stuff? Yes, it's not a 10 minute labor, you know, history. So be thankful it's geography this time. Um, but they just got to have fun with it. I mean, it's those little things for a walk around the block with the dog. I mean, there's there's great things, but I think sometimes just the the, those small things of getting outside. It's not coffee at night. I'll admit it's usually a glass of wine. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, <laughs> nature has been, there are all kinds of studies about nature, being in nature, being in the woods, being by the ocean, really can't do the ocean much anymore, but mm -hmm. all of that. And, and then listening for sounds and focusing on color. So many act activities that you can do. Mindfulschools.org, by the way, I use a lot of their mindfulness stuff with kids, mm -hmm. um, but it's good for grownups too. They have wonderful activities and wonderful things. I think the biggest thing, if we don't get anything out of this, because there's so much that we could be doing and could be focusing on, yep. I think the biggest thing is I'm hoping everybody will just find one thing that yep. they can do daily that's going to work for them, that they can just sit back, take a breath and say, you know what, I'm, I'm doing okay. Yep. Um, I just saw the, the post about um, the social distancing with the retirees and all that. Oh my God, we went on a birthday party um, drive by a parade about a week or so ago and my mother came with us and I got to laugh because my mother's never been on one of these she was waving and thanking everyone like it was for her he's turning nine like, it's not here. Like, thank, you, thank you this is so great thank you so we're gonna do it for her for her birthday but I mean it's those little things about just being able I think you know the hardest thing for us as educators we're always so social whether we want to admit it or not we miss people we miss yeah. people, we miss seeing people. First thing Becky Pringle says on every call that we have with the other presidents and executive directors is just let me take a minute and look at everybody. Mm -hmm. I just wanna look because I'm so happy I get to see everybody. Um, and I, you know, for us, I think that's the hardest thing as educators is we don't get to see other people. So everybody has different home lives. You might be living alone, you might be living with 
everybody and then their cousins and everybody else and everybody's different but if everybody can find at least one thing that you can do to kind of make it through you know it's gonna help and we have the summer coming up so we gotta be thankful about that so i know Arv has some stuff coming up for us this summer um we have some great stuff in the summer that we usually have in person but i think we're going to be doing most of it virtually this year which is okay too. Zoom can be great. We've all gotten used to Zoom. Um, but I think, um, I know Irv has a couple things to talk about that we're, we're putting on this summer. And I just want to warn you, I think we're partnering with principals on one of them, but it's okay. <laughs> it's a good thing. We like the, the um, executive director of the Principals Association. She's done a lot of good work with us. We really like Bridie. So, um, I think there'll be some good stuff coming up. So I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about some of what we have coming up or. Sure. Um, the first one's coming up tomorrow, Megan. And that's actually not just for um, self-care. It's suicide prevention. And we're working with NAMI to do that tomorrow afternoon. You can go to our website and register for that. And it will fulfill your two hour requirement for training anything that happens now counts because it has to happen within eight months of the law going into effect, which is a month from yesterday. It's next July, this coming July 1st. The other thing which I'm pretty excited about in the chat room, I put a file, I uploaded it there, and I came across a woman named Elena Aguilar, and I don't know if this, oh, look at my book, there is, the book appears. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's like a Harry Potter thing going on there. Invisibility but cloak for your. She has developed or identified twelve habits and twelve dispositions for emotionally resilient educators, and in the if you look at the chat room there, um, and download it, George is also putting a re this resource up on our website, and you can get it there if you have difficulty in the chat. But just habits like knowing yourself, understanding your emotions, telling empowering stories, building a community, being here now. So on August 17th and 18th of this year, so in like 10 weeks, there's going to be a two-day workshop where you're going to get a copy of the book and there's an accompanying workbook. Everybody who participates will get that. And then... So it's a two day workshop on how do we cultivate emotional resilience in educators. So that's Monday and Tuesday. And then Wednesday, it's not really a training of training workshop, but it's gonna be a more intimate workshop, either virtually or in person for those people who really want to help their colleagues. So you're not gonna necessarily go out and do workshops around onward, you're gonna say, here are some activities that we could engage in as a group, as an association, as a faculty to support each other. And that's why Megan and I felt it was important to get principals on board because if we're all supporting each other and she's, the principal's going crazy, that doesn't help us. So how do we not circle the wagons and fire in, but support each other in the work that we have to do, particularly at this difficult time? So that information will be up on our website probably next week. And so you can register for that. And I think, was there anything else, Megan, that? I, you know, I think I'm just, um, or just text your, just check your text real quick. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, this is how we all communicate back, back door through text. Um, I think the biggest thing is, you know, we're always looking, what do you want from us? I mean, what do you need from us? We come up with different things, different workshops, different series based on what we hear. And we're always looking for input. And so if there is something that you feel you're not getting that you need, you know, we need to know that. Everyone on this call has some sort of spot in their union as well. And I think that's a piece that, you know, we define ourselves as educators, but we're also union members. And in some way, whether you want to admit it or not, we're all an activist. And most of the time it's an activist for our students and that's great. We now need to be activists for ourselves. And you know, I think we have that added level of 
I need to do everything because I need to make sure that my local's getting everything they need. I need to make sure the local, the educators in my local are getting all their rights supported and everything. And that's something we need to recognize because when we define ourselves just as educators, I think we leave that piece out. But because we are all union members and we are all activists at some level, let's take this opportunity to be an activist for yourself. And as much as you stick up and speak out for all your, your members, and I know you do, stick up and speak out for yourself. You know, because again, if you can't make sure yourself you're healthy, you're not gonna be able to do anything for any of the members that you work with every day. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind, you know, one thing. But if you if you have anything, please, that's we're here to, you know, give you what you need. We're we're a union and we're gonna we're gonna do everything we can for educator rights, for student rights and everything like that, but we also need to do everything we can for you. And so what do you need from us? We're a professional organization as well. Um, so we need to find out what you want. So, you know, as always, and, yep. Well, you, thank you for texting that. I, I've been working for the last couple of days to pull this together. I can't believe I didn't mention it. Um, for some of you who worked in the summer, we're gonna be having a webinar and we will send this information out on the 10th around unemployment eligibility in the light of COVID. And we just got the workshop description. Did your school year end early? Could your next school year start late? Are you less sure this year you'll have a job when school starts? Are you an educational support professional and do not know how the rules are different for you? Do you typically work during the summer break as an employee or in self-employment but aren't sure you'll be able to work this summer due to COVID? If you answered yes to any of these questions, NEA New Hampshire urges you to join a special webinar on June 10th at 7 p.m. And that's from the New Hampshire Employment Security. So if you have questions around, given my summer employment or the lack thereof, do I have options around unemployment? And we'll send that out to every, all members, but it's June 10th at 7 p.m. Great. And you know, along with that, um, I know that there's been a lot of concern with ESP this whole year about, are we going to have the jobs next year? Because um, there's rumors and talk around the state, one about cutting UA positions for teachers, um, music, art, band, chorus, phys ed, all those things, foreign language, are they really essential? Do we really need them? So that's kind of what's starting to pop up now, but what's been happening all along is the concern on, are we gonna have para positions? Are we gonna have um, any of the other ESP positions? And if, if you've been following our ESP Educate and Elevate campaign, um, we're showing how critical and crucial the ESP are. So this is something that everybody can help with. This isn't just for the ESP. Um, sorry, I have a mosquito that just came in. Um, and so, you know, those are all things and we have, amazing resources for that. That actually got brought up to National, so National knows what we're doing. Um, I guess George was on a call today. I just, I'm doing this to make you feel good right now, <laughs> but everything we're doing in New Hampshire, George was on a call today with the other communications people across the state. Nobody else does live things like this, which shocked me, because I know other presidents do different Facebook messaging live and all that stuff, but it's not really live. I guess it's pre-recorded. Nobody else does any live things like this every week. And I was like, really? I thought everyone did this. Why not? It's a Zoom meeting. It's not that hard. You, you set it up and you invite people when they show up. Like how, how difficult is this? We're the only ones in the nation doing it that we know about. So you guys are participating, right? You guys are participating and we're first in the nation for the primary, first in the nation for live contact every Tuesday night. Um, I mean, this is just, no one thinks about New Hampshire like this, but yes, we are amazing. So if nothing else good happens this week, you guys are part of something that is the first in the nation to happen, and we are Zooming, Zooming beings. There you go. Zooming beings. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you know, earlier in the call, I said, should we have these over the summer? Yeah, I think we should. I think we're going to do Tuttle Deck Talks next. I think we'll just have them on the deck as it gets a little nicer. And between us and whoever else wants to join, probably going to have a glass of wine next time, just to let you know, because I think that's good. Just one to, you know, help. Um, and it's also just important so you guys know what's going on. I mean, we need to know what's going on with you so that we can do the work that we need to do with everybody in the state. And if I don't talk to you guys, I don't know what's going on and I can't help with anything. So, you know, I think these are great ones. Um, yeah, Chrissy, so what I'm hearing right now is uh, Conval 
is looking at that, and I talk about this because we're all members here. Um, I've heard Conval is talking about cutting UAs, and I and I don't know that they're going to. It's just kind of chatter. But I mean, our commissioner, you know how much I love him. He started with a lot of chatter about things, and we ended up trying to get Learn Everywhere passed. So, um, you know, I think what's happening with the survey is when the results come in in about a week, we're going to have to look at those and analyze them. But there's really three options going back in the fall. It's go back to everybody in school wearing a mask, which I'm sorry, I've said this before. I can't imagine little kindergartners wearing a mask all day because I couldn't wear it for an hour at the doctor's last week. Um, so we have that. So everybody go back. We have a hybrid system where you teach either morning in the classroom and afternoon at home or flip flop or two days at home, three days in the in the classroom, which makes no sense to me because then you're doing double duty and there's, I'm sorry, but there's no way in hell we're going to let that happen to any of the educators across the state. We're not going to let you support kids in that manner and we're not going to let you teach in that manner because that's just not right. Um, or go back completely remotely. And, you know, those are the three options. It's funny. Somebody asked me about the union leader article yesterday about uh, Nashua and, you know, was I outraged at what Nashua was, was proposing? No, it's the only three options there are. I don't know any other options. So we're trying to figure all that out. Um, there are schools that are going back in June across the country. I'm very interested to hear what happened. South Korea, I think it was. It just had to cut them. Um, I can try and find that article, Chrissy, and send it. I think it was in the union leader yesterday. Um, but let me take it down and I'll try and get it over to you. Um, remember, Nash was AFT, which is okay. Um, but we will um we will see what's going on so you know i mean there's so much there's so many questions there's so many what ifs i think what's going to happen i know what's going to happen is whatever the commissioner recommends most of the superintendents are going to take it as gospel even though they don't have to because it's simply a recommendation and they don't have to follow what the D doe says um but it's going to be our job to make sure they know what does and doesn't work and that's really what we're doing. So, you know, we're we're here to get all your all your um, feelings out. Can you get that article, George, tomorrow that we can send out? Okay, so we'll either get it sent out to you, Chrissy, or we'll put it on the um put it on the website. And just for information purposes, all the task force things got pushed ahead a week because you know so many wonderful um, responses I think are coming in on the survey. Um, I know people are taking it. I encourage everybody to take it and be brutally honest. I got an email today um, about being brutally honest on the survey, and I think that was great. We need to be. Yeah, librarians, I asked that question. I specifically asked, are libraries going to be back open when, if we go back into the schools in fall, and what are we going to do about books? Are we going to get rid of them or keep them? And there was no answer, Betsy. So. I mean, these are all the things. What, what I see out of this is that our commissioner truly has no idea what it is. And the interesting thing, I just want to throw this out there because this kind of made my week. There was an article, I think, in Sunday's, maybe Sunday's union leader about uh, Representative Glenn Cordelli, who's a really good friend of the commissioner. And he's all about private school, innovation schools, you know, vouchers, everything that we're not for. Um, he actually called remote learning an experiment. So I think we're gonna use that because you know we can't be experimenting on our kids. This is not an experiment that we can keep going. Um, it's just, it's, it's crazy. You cannot, I'm not gonna let my children's lives be dependent on an experiment that somebody thinks is gonna work. And I know that everybody out there as, as educators is not gonna let any of the kids' lives be dependent on an experiment. So um, just to let you know, we are, we're on top of it. Um, yes, we can get the suicide webinar link. Can we get that posted tonight, Herb, or? If you go to the, it, it's on the, on the front page, the slider that talks about the Educate and Elevate program. If you click on that, all the workshops are listed and uh, by the suicide one is the, is a link for that one. Okay, if you can't find it, um, let me know tonight and we'll get that out to you specifically. Um, and so can the, we put it in the chat? We, uh, no, I can't um, right now because the, I don't know what's wrong with the program here, but if I touch anything, we're all going to go home and I don't want that to happen to you. Right? Yeah. Um, 
I think the biggest thing when I got all those emails back from people asking how they were going to feel comfortable going back was that um, they're only going to feel comfortable going back when a doctor says it's safe. When an epidemiologist, epidemiologist comes out and says it's safe to be out without this, this, and this, that, that's when people are going to feel safe. And that's what I heard from all the educators in New Hampshire. So, you know, I think that's, I think that's important to remember. The other quick thing is my screensaver actually says that educators make more decisions in a day than a brain surgeon. And that's something to think about. So when somebody is actually doing surgery on a brain, educators actually make more decisions than they do just during that surgery. And that's why you're so exhausted. And that's why chocolate and coffee are, you know, should be running through IVs from all the ceilings. So maybe when we redesign schools, we get IVs coming from the ceiling that have one drip of caffeine, whether it's tea, coffee, Coke, whatever, Mountain Dew, and the other drip is just a chocolate that just somehow goes into the microphones that we all have to wear. That's the other thing. I don't think the commissioner realizes, one, you can't read lips if you're wearing a mask. So all the people that work with deaf children and maybe if you're reading lips, you can't do that. And second, how are you supposed to use your microphone that a lot of people have to wear? Because I had to wear one for years in Pembroke. How are you supposed to wear that with the amplification system if you're fixing your mask all day? Like these are the things that he truly doesn't get because he doesn't go to public schools. He doesn't understand what it's like. So anyway, that's what gets me excited. Besides what's talking in the morning with the birds is I get to fight with the commissioner and make him realize that he has no clue. So anyway, I think, you know, Cindy, thank you so much. There's so much in your workshops go into so much more of this. I mean, this literally is just a snippet of, of what you talk about in the workshops. And I know you're going to be with us for, again. So we're going to encourage everyone to sign up because like you said, there's so much more. Um, Irv, I know you're doing everything you can to get what people want. I think we have some great workshops this summer coming up. Um, anytime you think of something you need, let Irv know or, or myself and we'll definitely get it. But again, I think the most important thing to get out of this, besides I like um, fighting with the commissioner, is um, yeah, Gail, I would love to get him in there. I would love to. I just, I want him to go sit in like a, a kindergarten, a fourth, an eighth grade classroom for like a week. I actually asked the commissioner, I gave him a challenge that since he was sleeping outside to see what it was like to be homeless. I gave him a challenge to come into the schools for a week and he never took me up on it. Um, we'd even give him a sub pay if he wanted. I mean, what, $65 a day? That's worth it. So, um, <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Pretty much what my dog says. Um, but yeah, I think it, <laughs> that's a third. If anything, you know, find that one thing that's going to get you to kind of to center yourself to come, whatever it is, everybody's different, but find that one thing. Like I said, for me, it's a cup of coffee in the morning on my deck with my lovely French bulldog who really is cute, but annoying. Um, She's like that kid in the class that you just can't, you, you gets under your skin, but there's just something about that kid that you were like, I love this kid. Um, okay. So that's all I have. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming tonight. As always, um, I'm going to get off, but yeah, exactly. Coffee and chocolate and humor. It's my life. Um, Irv's going to stay on, I think for a little bit. I just want to share that video. It really is. If you haven't seen it, it's really, I'm um, very thought provoking. You won't regret having spent four minutes. So anything else, Cindy, thank you for what you did. Thanks. Thank Thanks for having me here. Oh, thank you. And um, yeah, stay tuned for next week. We're, uh, it's open for topics right now. So if you think of something, let me know. Otherwise we'll, um, we'll come up with something and you know, we'll get it out to everybody. But again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything you're doing for the kids of New Hampshire. I know for my own kids, um, it's just in for your locals. It's it really is appreciated. Whether no one said it to you today or not, thank you so much. Um, it's appreciated more than you know. Brinley's even saying thank you. So I will see you guys hopefully next week um, and have a great night. If I don't see you before then, I'll talk to you. Thanks, guys. So I'm gonna get off, but George and Irv will stay on. Oh, hang on a sec.